Morning, everybody. I uh, hope you're all well um, on this lovely day. Well, sort of lovely day. It's a bit dreary out there today and a bit cold, but um, I'm not quite sure where spring has gone, but it's uh, disappeared. Um, so um, I want to welcome Dougie and Morag today. Morag um, from Froome Community Drivers and Dougie from Active and in Touch. Um, and they're going to come to talk to us today about the wonderful service that they provide in the Froome area. Um, so I can pass straight on to you, Morag, if that's okay. And you can just explain a little bit about what you do and, um, and how you're helping everybody when we're in the middle of this pandemic. <laughs> Hi, um, yeah, so I'm Morag and I work for Froome Community Drivers. Um, we're based in Froome, but we're trying to expand a bit further afield so we, we go to the villages outside of Froome as well. Um, we basically, we're a service for people who um, can't use public transport necessarily, um, don't have their own transport or don't have friends and family near that can help them. And we can take them uh, to medical appointments, but also to, um, we used to do a lot of exercise groups and hairdressers, shopping, social. So any any journeys that people need, just so they don't feel isolated or, you know, they're, they're stuck at home, we can help with that. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we do. <laughs> Brilliant. It sounds it sounds really, um, especially very valued at the moment with people, you know, um, having appointments come through or phoning up for COVID vaccinations. And then, you know, they're really concerned about how I'm actually going to get there because, you know, they may have relied on uh, elderly relatives or, or even friends or neighbours, but they didn't really feel safe about getting in the car with them and that sort of thing. So I'm presuming you've yeah. got all your social distancing and masks and everything yes. that you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and most of our drivers um, have had a, had a COVID vaccination at least by now. Um, but yeah, and also since since the pandemic, we've actually come into our own more in that we've been helping with um, delivering prescriptions and um, lots of different odd things you know taking wheelchairs to hospital and for people that needed them and just trying to help out as much as we can with people that have been shielding as well so we've, we've done quite a bit with that this during this last year as well as just taking people on um, journeys. Yeah I think the prescription side of it is was a real worry for everybody of instant you know shielding and people who were just used to being independent and you know going out and collecting things themselves even if they were elderly and of course, without that, they, they didn't really know where to turn to and lots of floods of calls coming in. And, you know, how can how can somebody help? You know, we, we need some help. So, um, you know, it's certainly been an invaluable service for us to um, to be able to um, refer people to your service. And, um, you know, it's really taken a, a weight off their mind. So thank you for that. Um, I see your, your main website um, is, uh, is is been posted on there. Um, the well, Froome Community Drivers one. Um, but there's obviously lots of other things that sit within active and in touch as well, which Dougie will talk about in a minute. Um, is there anything else you want to say about the um, drivers? I know you've got some service delivery costs, um, Morag. I don't know if you want to yeah. sort of run through. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, it's what you, um, yeah, it's just as well. Yeah, it's worth talking about that. It's um, basically uh, the cost is fairly reasonable. We have a two pound booking fee, but then after that, it's um, 60p a mile. Um, but if you have a bus pass, which a lot of our users do, um, then it works out as 30p a mile. So say a trip just round Froome to the medical practice normally works out as something like three pounds um, yeah. there, you know, the whole journey and the, the driver will wait for you. We've got some lovely volunteer drivers. They're so kind um, and they normally wait and then take take them home as well. Um, but yeah, we've, um, we've suddenly got really busy so we also we you know we do we are looking for more volunteers we're okay in Froome but around the villages in uh, you know for Froome and East Mendip we're desperate for some more volunteer drivers to help us help us there and and actually since um we've merged with Active in Touch which we probably might talk about a bit more we've mm -hmm. you know our, our profiles lifted so much more and we are getting very busy so yeah it would be good to have a few more volunteer drivers and so we just go on your um Froome Community Drivers website there, Morag, and then is there a request yeah. for volunteers on there? 
people can find yeah or, or yeah there should be our phone number on there and i think also if you we um we've got details on active and in touches um website now as well we're you know we're hoping to not have our website and then we'll be completely part of active and in touch soon and um it, all the details are on there as well it, it, just ring me and yeah or email perfect well, I know, you know, especially where you get um, it being more rural, people would just struggle to to think about which bus yeah. could I get to take me there or whatever, especially with, you know, places they used to go in, but it could be they're being sent to a vaccination centre that they don't know. And, you know, the yes, door to door yeah. service is obviously, you know. Yeah. It, it, I've just had a phone call this morning from someone. It's it's slightly different area, but. Um, yeah, the, the, the um, we've had a call from somebody from Norton St Philip today um, mm. who needs to get to Shepton, Shepton Mallet for the COVID mm. and she was just so pleased to hear. Um, I think her husband died last year and she's got cataracts now and she was feeling really quite mm. isolated. She doesn't know anybody in Norton St Philip mm. at the moment. So I was able to tell her about all our other services as well. So I think that's really helped her as well. So. Yeah, I think actually, like you said, it could be um, a foot in the door for some people because they may phone you about a, a lift, but actually, you know, then it's sort of active and in touch to be able to pick up those people that, you know, really do require other things and probably don't really know who to ask or, you know, don't feel like they want to be a burden. So to just have that general conversation in the first place, it just leads to other things. That's sort of yeah. what happens with our, with our referrals. You know, they, they could just be something simple like, oh, is there anyone that could collect my shopping? And then you find out, well, it's because of this, that and the other, the reason why they yeah. couldn't go shopping or, you know, and then you, you can help. So it's, it's certainly great for, um, yeah. for sending on referrals. So. Brilliant. Yeah, because I, I just to butt in there, I think one of the things that I love about Froome community drivers is that some of the most um, interesting conversations people have are in cars. You know, mm. taking your kids to school or on long journeys or talking to tax drivers. But actually, people open up in cars and they connect. Mm. And actually, quite a lot of these people who are isolated and lonely, it's because they haven't got connections. And I know Morag does try and um, put the same driver with the same person who needs mm. the help if we can. And so there is a bond that that develops between the volunteer driver and the person they pick up and sometimes people just say can someone take me shopping and what they really want is to get in the car with the person they know and mm -hmm. have a chat which is just mm -hmm. brilliant well and that's the trouble that we're sort of having with people just making appointments at the doctors that they're almost making appointments at the doctors because they want a purpose to go somewhere to discuss something to just have that contact um, which is you know a far too expensive thing to try and um, and, and also push for uh, any appointments for, for anybody who actually does have a, an illness that needs treating it's still a mental illness that somebody needs to pick up so um you know like you said you're, you're in a car with someone there's nothing else you could do but you you know you have to spark up a conversation we, we are creatures who like to spark up conversation so um you know it it, it does definitely um you know i did some training actually it went me took me straight back to some suicide training about um a young person sat in the back of a taxi actually and just picking up on those visual clues of someone seems a bit upset you know and just trying to get them to open up slightly and um you know and it like you said it could just be that conversation that gets them the help that they need so uh, I'm, I'm i've what, been in the, talk oh, sorry <laughs> i was just going to say the other thing that's really good is we have a really really strong relationship with medical staff within mendip you know with yes. the health connectors with the gps and actually if the drivers do see someone who is you know not coping or they can say to them look you know have you spoken to your doctors you know or we can refer back to using the people that refer people to us we can yeah. say you know we picked this person up the other day it might be worth someone going and knocking on our door and just checking on them so there's mm. kind of a circle that's closed because of those collaborative relationships we mm. have with with medical professionals mm. Mm. yeah i think you sort of forget that it's um you know, it's a, a delivery, well, pick up, you know, a, an actual service for just one thing, but it turns into so much more, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, is there anything else, Morag, um, you want to share about the um, Freeman Community Drivers? Or yeah. You want to sort of yeah, yeah, sorry, just, just bringing up things about mental health. I've, I've been having a conversation with a lovely lady. She's actually over um, near 
Bridgewater, so it's a bit further than we normally do, but we are um, helping her on her journey to um, this amazing um, course they're doing at Mel's Ward Garden. And she has really struggled with her mental health, really, you know, feeling really dark about her mental health. And it's just so good to do things like that, that we're actually going to be able to get her to this to this course, which I, I feel from talking to her could be quite life saving. So, you know, we do yeah. have things like that, that you do think we've, we're really helping people here. And I know there's another lady that's um, got a good relationship with one of our drivers and apparently she's really, really open to up to him about mm. some quite serious stuff. And um, I think it's been really helping her. So, you know, it's great if we can help people like that as well. And, and then refer people. And that's why Dougie and I got talking because there was so much um, in, you know, common because mm. a lot of the people are very isolated. So that's, you know, why I got talking to Dougie about the fact that, oh, could I refer the people to him? And, mm. you know, so that's why it just seemed like such a good um, combination for us to join up really. Yeah, it's just so important because, you're just picking somebody up as well. It's you know you can get to really see their physical well-being, and you may be at the doorway. You can see what they're you know what they're living yeah. in. It could be that they yeah. really struggle that you know, and yeah. they, they probably haven't thought that they could get you know an occupational therapist in to do an, a, a needs yeah. assessment. And yeah. um, you know, and, and it's just having that. I mean, I know we we get referrals in sometimes from paramedics who say, "Oh gosh, we've just picked somebody up, and is there mm. any way?" you can go in the house was really quite bad I wouldn't feel yeah. happy about them being discharged from hospital you know and no. you wouldn't necessarily know all these people you know neighbours don't necessarily no. they've got no, no family or friends and um yeah you know. we've, we've had that that we've had a driver that have said I'm really sorry but I just can't go into this particular house and so mm. we've had to bring the health connectors at room were just wonderful mm. and we rang them and obviously they get onto it and everything mm. but yeah you're right that you see things that other people might not have seen and mm. it's yeah it's a bit shocking some some the way some people are having to live because they haven't got mm. the help because maybe they don't realize they can get some help mm. yeah yeah <laughs> um, yeah, Sarah sort of said about the um, good experience with Mendic Community Transport. And obviously, they're really good service um, for picking up people locally as well. As well. Um, yeah, and, they're, uh, you know, we yeah, do, they're pretty much the same the as us. Yeah, they're same. Yeah, thank all the yeah. volunteer yeah, drivers. I, I don't think people realise that it's volunteers necessarily that are doing the driving and, you know, they're giving up their time. And it, it's helpful for them for their own mental health. They could also be you know quite isolated themselves but still happy to drive yeah. and it's a way yeah. for them to get out and and, and chat Definitely. as well so. we, we always talk about you know I'm sure that all the drivers have got different reasons for helping and and it is great to help people it does give you a bit of a buzz helping people mm -hmm. I know that um but also I do know that there are people that have joined since you know losing their wives or mm -hmm. you know things like that that have it does it like you say it gives them a purpose and mm. so it works both ways really I think you know some of the volunteers well all of them are just wonderful and mm. sometimes when I'm having you know I've got a particular journey to cover like the Bridgewater one or you know going something like Bristol Royal Infirmary and you just think I can't imagine anybody's going to want to do that especially at 6 30 in the morning or something like that mm. but there's always someone that will do it and it's yeah I'm always amazed by how our drivers are Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need more people. We need more volunteers. Then we need people to get on there and um, and and think. Actually, yeah. this is something yeah. I could do. I, I, mean, and I know I know people as they get older with with eyesight. I mean, I'm I'm the same. I, I don't really particularly like driving too late at night now because you know I <laughs> struggle with my eyesight and things. But I, you know, so I I do understand that people may worry about things like that. But you know, we've got lighter nights now, haven't we? So if there are journeys to be made. Um, yeah. it's, it's not quite so bad in early morning. Yeah. But there's also things like, you know, even just parking at the RUH, we've got people that are probably in their 80s and will drive, but then they don't want to have to worry about getting yeah. to the RUH and parking. So, you know, there are people that, that do have cars, but prefer not mm. to do the longer journeys and things. So we're happy to help with that situation. Yeah, you can never park anywhere near where you need to be. Can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> or you could just drive in round for about two hours trying to find a space. No. So, it, you know, it certainly does help. Okay, yeah, that's lovely. Exactly. That's really good. Um, case yeah. studies are obviously really good. I mean, any any time you've got any good case studies of people that you think, oh, you know, that's really changed their lives, and um, it's it's great to share things like that. So it's it's good that we can have you on yeah. things like this to to really sort of share those stories. So so thanks for mentioning those those people to us. Um, is yeah. there anything yeah. else um, you want to discuss or should we sort of join forces with Dougie and he can tell us about Active and In Touch and all the other wonderful things that uh, that you do. Yeah, if Doug, it's, 
Yeah, there's lots going on with Active in Touch. And we, and like, we are, like we said, we, we've recently merged. So we're sort of, it's lovely to be a part of that team as well. So yeah. we're all sort of doing things together now. So yeah, over to Dougie. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think the thing, the thing is, you know, people say to me, you know, why did you merge? Uh, you know, what, it, what are the things? And I think there are two main things that we've got in common. The first is that we are completely run basically by volunteers. So, you know, there, there is equivalent of two full time staff in Active in Touch and from community drivers. Morag is you know the one-man band but she isn't because she's got volunteers um we've got um four 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 part-time staff in active touch plus more ag so it's five of us but we only two full-time staff kind of if you add up the hours mm. but we've got over 300 volunteers who Gosh. when you think people even pre-pandemic volunteering to do work for someone else is amazing volunteering to do work when there's something going on in your life which is huge you know you're affected by the pandemic as well you're a volunteer you've got to get in your car it might be slightly more dangerous than not taking anyone and you're still doing that i mean just I, my admiration for the volunteers we've got so that was the first thing we're both basically volunteer organizations and we we, we basically morgan i kind of coordinate volunteers but it's the volunteers that do the work and, and and that they are so amazing and then the second bit is if i you know because my cat came to me really and said you know she wanted to become a charity and could i help her and i said yeah of course we can there's lots we can do i can share my um policies my governance all the stuff we do because every all, every volunteer we have we have proper governance you know we dbs them we make sure they're safe we interview them we interview the the, the members etc um i said we can share all of that and then she said at kind of at the end of the coffee after about an hour of chatting she said but we do the same thing we help we help people although i'm driving people we help people who are isolated and lonely why don't we just join together and i just there was kind of like a light bulb and we thought oh. yeah absolutely let's let's join together and our, yeah. our purpose the active in touch purpose but i suppose it's from community drivers purpose now is to tackle loneliness and isolation within the community in order to improve people's health and well-being mm -hmm. and it's that key you know what we do the impact we have is hopefully someone who might have been isolating or shielding in the house for six months, never been out, not sure yeah. how they're going to get to their vaccination center. Suddenly they've got a safe option that they can they can do. Um, so it was it was absolutely logical. And I don't know why we hadn't thought of it before, but we're in the right place now, I think. Well, it's just thinking about those key elements, isn't it, as to, you know, why are they isolated? Is it actually that, because you know some people have never liked going to groups or clubs or, you know, I mean, some people don't. Well, I have clients now who are like, oh, I can suggest all these things that we could send them to. Oh, well, no, I don't want to do that. But actually, they might just like a drive out. They might just like a trip to the supermarket. That might be actually what they like to do. But um, you, you can't say to everybody, do an online food shop. It just doesn't fit for a lot of elderly people to just do an online food shop. You know, they want to still go and sort out their own things, pop to the post office, you know, and it's 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 a key element, like you said, of, um, of people's lives that once they either give up driving or they lose a partner, you know, my mum's never driven. It's always relied on my dad to be the driver. And um, if they do lose that element in their life, they are lost, aren't they? Yeah, and there is one of the things the, ice, ice, um, the pandemic has shown and this is a, gener a generalization, and I usually don't make generalizations, but what it has shown is the older generation, and by that I mean people probably over 80, and we've got quite a lot of our members with Active in Touch. And, you know, we've got at least 11 people who are in their 90s, two over 100. Um, but the people over 80 generally are, there's a real digital gap between their expertise and those that are younger and so there's a lot of people who are 80 don't even have a computer so doing say an online shop 
oh, it, they just they just can't do. Mm. You know, and one of the one of the stories that we had is that, you know, one of our trustees uh, was in Asda's and she saw this um, old gent walking around Asda's doing his shop. He must have been about eighty five. This is in lockdown one, and she said, "What are you doing? You shouldn't be in here. It's not. It's, it's not. It's dangerous for you to be in here. Yeah. Uh, and Act and Touch can do your shopping." And he said, "Yeah, but how do I get hold of Act and Touch?" And she said, "Well, look, here's, here's their phone number." And he said, "I don't have a phone. Oh, I don't have a phone. I, he didn't have a, a landline or a mobile. He just didn't have a phone." And so we put a call out to the community and said, "Does anyone have any old phones?" And when I say old phones, we got we got some iPhone 4s and things like that, you know. But all I wanted was a simple phone. And we went and bought a 99 pence SIM card, which doesn't help you make phone calls. But what it does do is it make you have the ability to receive a phone call. Mm. And so every Tuesday we could say to people, right, we'll ring you up every Tuesday. We'll get your shopping. We'll pass it on to Froome Community Drivers. And they'll go out, get your shopping, or, or in more importantly, your prescription. So, again, people yeah, said, why yeah. don't people get their prescriptions online? You know, because yeah. if you're not online, you can't get your prescription. So if this pandemic happened in yeah. 20 years' time, it wouldn't be a problem because everyone would be online and they would be ordering yeah. stuff. Yeah. But it, yeah. it's happened now. Um, yeah. And some people have built up some really good friendships. That's the other thing, because we try and match people. So the main thing that Active in Touch does, you know, what 75 percent of what we do is we match befriending. So we get someone we call our clients members because it's like being in a club mm. and we find a volunteer. But instead of just going down a list and saying, right, this volunteer to this member and this volunteer, we look at what their interests are. So if someone likes playing Scrabble. We'll try and find a volunteer who likes playing Scrabble. Mm. Or if we like, uh, we've got someone who likes dogs, we'll find someone who has a dog. Or so we match them. Hopefully, where rapport is going to develop, where people will eventually just become friends. Mm. And actually, we we ask for a commitment of an hour a week from someone to befriend. And that's a lot of that has been on the phone during the pandemic. Well, interestingly, the average time a volunteer is spending at the moment is two and a half hours. Just one, because they've got the time because mm. of the pandemic. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, mm. But also they've just connected with people and they're mm. really having a good conversation. And now we're starting to be able to meet outside. People are meeting in Victoria Park, which is a big park in Froome. Or there's talking benches in down by the library. The health connectors have organised some talking benches. Um, so we're just getting people out to do one to one, and that's where Froome Community Drivers is great because sitting in a car, you can have a. And if, if you've got an hour's drive to the RUH in Bath, mm. you end up having really in depth conversations about I don't know important stuff, and you build up that rapport. And that person might then say, "Well, look, why don't we go shopping together?" So that's the other thing. We do things rather than doing things for people. Mm. We do things with people. Mm. And, and that's the really big difference. So we try not we're not carers. We don't go into someone's house and wash their dishes and clean up their kitchen. We go in, make a cup of tea and go and sit with them. Mm. Or we say to them, gosh, your kitchen's looking a bit messy. Why don't we wash up the dishes together? Mm. So it's I'll wash enabling, dry, isn't but, it? Yeah. But you do mm. something that connects and mm. does something together. Mm. Yeah. And I've and waffled now. No, you haven't waffled. It's been really interesting. To, well, it's just that enabling, isn't it? And actually, I do wonder whether if we hadn't had this pandemic, we, we wouldn't have even built up half of these connections and these people would still have been lonely. It's only because of a different way of them having to do it because they may have been capable of going to get their prescription, you know, and they may have been capable of nipping to the supermarket twice a week to pick up things, not spoken to a person at all or had a brief conversation with someone on a busy checkout and that would have been it. Um, whereas now, like you said, they've got someone who's quite happy to meet them in the park because they've also got a dog. You, you know, you wouldn't have felt probably happy even walking past somebody with a dog and sparking up a conversation. We don't you know, we just yeah. don't, people think weird, weird person. <laughs> don't they? If anybody has a conversation with you, it's like, why are they talking to me? 
but you, like you said, you've brought those people together and it is important <laughs> for, you know, any mental health support, a peer, peer support person, if they've got something in common, they're going to understand and they're going to say, oh, do you know what? I didn't really know about power of attorney or I didn't really know what to do with my garden. Now it's become, you know, now I can't cope with it anymore. And they'll say, oh, well, did you know you could do? And they just wouldn't have had those conversations, would they? I don't think if they either one once sat in a car and then... Mm -hmm. Um, built up that befriending or telephone call um you know my, my sister-in-law does the telephone calls through the coronavirus um you know helpline one and yeah. she's got about six or seven people now just because she was a dog walker and so she had to stop really so she thought well i want to do something what shall i do and she's got you know six or seven people that she phones regularly now and um and they really look forward to her call they say oh do you know what i was I, i'm glad you phoned today I, I wrote down a few things i had to tell you about and <laughs> and actually you know just to know they've got that call coming it gives some yeah. people just something to look forward to a reason to you know want to uh get I, up to the um, I, I end up having some lovely conversations with people as well just you know when they're ringing up just to book a car and I, mm. I just yeah I've had some really lovely chats with people I, I really enjoy it I just, I'm quite mm. happy chatting to people there's some interesting people out there yeah yeah <laughs> that, that could have just been stood on a bus stop somewhere you yeah. know not not chatting to anybody so um yeah so. And I think this last year, I mean, Froome's brilliant for social groups, isn't it? I think, you know, before the pandemic, it just had mm. so many regular social groups, particularly for the elderly people. And, and I think that's been really missed. So, yeah, Active and In Touch have really stepped up with all of those sort of things. But, I mean, people may not have known about the groups that were going on anyway, though, Morag. I mean, although that's there true. are these groups that have been going on, if they have been isolated and well not isolated necessarily but you know generally their life doesn't really involve them seeing people for one they wouldn't feel like oh, let me find out about some groups which like you said dougie well how are they going to find out about them because they don't yeah. have a computer to google anything and they didn't even yeah. know about mendic health connectors and you know and there wasn't a flyer just happened to be on a wall somewhere that they walked past mm -hmm. you know so how will they find out about these things so i think uh, you know, it's, um, it's, it's also I suppose the other thing you said before is that some people don't actually want to do whole groups, do they? And I know active in touch in normal times, you sort of allow for that, don't you? You have slightly bigger groups and, and smaller groups, don't you, as well? Yeah, we've got a big group on a Tuesday. I mean, there were 28 people. We, you know, before I'll explain why there were 28 people in a minute. But on Tuesday, this Tuesday, there were 28 people out in the sun, uh, out in Victoria Park. But what we do is we, as they arrive, we split them out into groups of five, not six, because just in case someone decides to go somewhere else and move around because they're, they've got dementia or whatever, they're not easy to control. So we make five groups. So we had literally six groups of five. Um, around you know maybe 30 meters apart but all being controlled well not controlled but all being they were part of active and in touch group um what we can't do is give them coffee or tea or biscuits or anything like that it's just mm. a conversation but actually the some of these people are people who i mean there were three people on tuesday who had not been out of their house for six months you know um which is just brilliant and i think one of the one of the it's not a positive that's the wrong word but one of the impacts of the pandemic is i think there's less of a stigma to admitting that you're lonely uh because everyone you know even i have felt lonely at some stages you know and, and i got a wife and daughter in the house but you still feel you know um everyone has felt that so i think people are saying do you know what i do feel lonely and i do need company and i do want to connect and therefore i'm going to join a group or i'm going to go to back to in touch or i'm going to get in touch with them and they're starting to get we are still getting even at this stage between two and three new members per week coming to us mm. most of them through uh, uh the mendip health connectors because yeah, thanks, Sarah. We've got Sarah on with us today, actually. Sarah's on. Right. Sarah. Um, yeah, so most of our referrals, um, you know, come from either people self-referring, uh, so they've suddenly decided, and then we didn't used to get many self-referrals, but we're getting a lot more now, either self-referrals, families who are more mobile, so 
uh, daughters and sons who aren't in Froome who, so we had one daughter in Singapore saying, I've got an 85 year old mother in Froome and she's shielding and she can't get her shopping. We sorted her out, chat to her. And so she's having phone calls with her daughter, you know, maybe every second day. So she wasn't kind of isolated. Well, she was probably not lonely, but she was isolated. Yes. Bit different. Mm. But yeah, so but the health connectors um, are fantastic. And they go in and they see people and they think, gosh, you would really benefit from this, or your mental health might benefit from this, or your you might just need connecting and therefore they come on board and we match and then the, the skill with us skill with 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 more ag and the, the other um people who coordinate the volunteers is then matching people who you know you know so yes it's who's with more ag particularly it's about who's available but actually if she's got three or four people available it is about trying to match the person they're going to have the best conversation the best connection with when they they take them in the car um so yeah wonderful yeah no so it's, it's definitely about us all joining together and i think we yeah we are quite strong for that in in mendip i like to think anyway that we've you know we do all work together yeah. the health connectors and the village and community agents um you know whoever we get our referrals through we always make sure we're putting them in touch with the right people that are going to help them for the you know the issue um that they've got or they didn't even know they had an issue but we've you know, we've managed to find out and, and worked out how we can make their life, you know, a little easier. So, um, And I think, we, like you said, this, this has actually affected all of us, even us that have been kept busy or working or whatever. If, if, I think if, if any of us haven't said we haven't cried and tried to pull our own hair out, I think throughout the whole of this, then um, we're not human. <laughs> if we've certainly had a, you know, had our fair share of that, all of us, so. But it, you, like you said, the feeling of helping someone and making that difference in their life is is just so powerful. And I, I think, you know, that there could be people like you've said, more like your volunteers who probably haven't necessarily even volunteered all their life because they've been busy. You know, we're all busy. Like you said, we've all been busy, um, but we've all still got a lot to give. And if it means donating to be a driver or also volunteering with active and in touch you know to help coordinate some of these uh, groups then um you know it's wonderful so thank you so much yeah i don't know if there's anything else you want to share what what about your groups um so what's running at the moment then dougie what what have you actually got yeah so no it's a good question so we do run two groups normally we run a, a small monday group mm. and we usually run that in the, uh, the bridge cafe which um is a venue that um is in Froome, very small venue uh and we that's a very small group where people have um been isolated and they've had a befriender and they do want to get out a bit more but aren't aren't yet happy about going and being in a big group you know something more than five or six is too much for them so a small group of about five or six and usually they bring you know their knitting or someone makes cards or someone does some drawing uh, so there is a kind of crafty group where people are doing different crafts, um, but chatting. And then we do a Tuesday group. And that used to be inside. And we used to go to different venues like the Assembly Rooms, which is the back of the Memorial Theatre. We use the Corner House, which is um, a pub where the, the landlord there, Martin, let, would supply cake. In fact, his his staff would bake us fresh cakes to to go there um and phoenix house but that obviously we won't be able to we can't go inside there and meet until 21st of june so currently as long as it's not raining our tuesday group is meeting in victoria park at the bandstand and if anyone is not a member of ours but feels isolated or lonely and wants to come and have a look at how that is works and meet a couple of people then they're very welcome and we will introduce them to someone and then they can think about, you know, joining us or not. So, and then we do, we do also um, run events. So we had a trip to Weymouth. We're, we were, we were going to go bowling just before the pandemic started. Um, we have Christmas dinners. So we do do those things, but mainly indoors. So they've had to, had a, a stop. 
but it's our 10th anniversary this year so we're really pulling out the stops to after the 10th after the 21st of june we're gonna start having some lovely tea parties and events that people get involved with oh lovely that's really good. Um, I'm just going to put a few of those things down in the comments section so people can um, yep. have a quick look and then go on to your website for further details. But um... and, and the other thing we're running at the moment, um, and this is this is not me because I have not really got an artistic bone in my body. So it's people like Morag <laughs> and Tracy and Di. <laughs> we are running um, uh, an art project. It's called Portrayal. What is it? Portrayal in a pandemic, Morag, I think, isn't it? Pandemic. Of a pandemic, yeah. yes. <laughs> and we are asking people to supply a piece of art. It can be a poem, a drawing, a painting, a photograph, a sculpture. By, I think, the 4th of June, uh, digitally take a picture of it and send it to us. Uh, about how they felt about being isolated or lonely during the pandemic. Uh, and then we're going to exhibit the, the art in, so we've got four or five venues in September where we're going to exhibit the art. So yeah, anyone who wants to produce a piece of art of how they felt about being isolated or lonely. And that that sounds negative, it could be positive. So I'll give you an mm -hmm. example. Um, we've got one piece of art that someone whenever they felt a bit down they've gone for this walk and on this walk there's this fantastic view and so, and the view just raises their morale and their feelings and so they've drawn this view that they go and see whenever they feel down so it can be a positive thing it doesn't need to be a, a, a sad thing um or you know meeting your you know after lockdown one meeting your grandparents again or whatever and there's two age, three age groups under 12 under 18 and adults so yeah there's a plug for that perfect <laughs> i'm putting it in <laughs> uh, if i can spell i'm trying to i'm trying to touch type and quickly put it all in <laughs> if they go to our website on the events tab at the top on the on the home page okay. all the details are on the events tab okay perfect lovely that sounds great well it sounds like you're like you said you're really I think people are getting quite positive about things hopefully starting back up and and actually I think we all do really enjoy the outside if it's one thing we've all sort of probably done more of is go outside so I think the fact these things are having to run outside we're all used to it now we've probably all bought a new woolly hat and warmer coat and we're and waterproof and wellies so I think <laughs> we're all I mean I'm a dog walker so uh, you know already, already used to being out in all weathers but yeah so I think everybody has probably enjoyed getting out and about and it does seem like it's the new norm almost doesn't it so, uh, easy to start outside but i understand that obviously the more elderly um and frail people are, are going to want to do the things inside but um but yeah there's some good things to come i think from the summer yes. onwards definitely okay well i don't know if there's anything else really um that you want to share i mean we've had quite a good session on what's been going on um but don't forget you know to, to make these things successful and run um unfortunately we you know we all need money so um to make sure your your vehicles are you know just kept as as good as they need to be with maintenance and everything else it all it all you know adds up doesn't it so it'd be great if we can make sure we um put a bit more money in the donation pot so uh, that's that's uh, back on there so everybody can find out where you are. Um, thank you so much for coming on today. I think it's been really good. And I, um, you know, I'm really pleased that us. we've been able to um, to really share what Active yeah, in Touch and Green Community Drivers have done because um, it's great. And I know your reach is slightly outside of Froom as well now. So, um, you know, just, just inquire, I suppose, yeah. if there is anybody that sort of feels like Norton's Philip, for instance, you know, if they feel they're slightly outside. Um, and we do have obviously the Mendip community transport as well for people more, um, uh, you yes. know, further afield. Yeah. So they're very good as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And um, you know, do let us know about uh, your volunteers if they exceed how many. How many was it you said you had, Dougie? How many? Oh, volunteers? about three hundred now. Yeah, mm, that's amazing. Need, it's amazing to probably... think you can have that many, really. No. Um... But we've got more. We've got more members than we have volunteers. So we always need more more volunteers. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some of our volunteers see two people. 
Uh, mm. And obviously, it's much better if they're they're seeing one, and they can, mm. you know. But that's because of necessity. So yeah, mm. always always need more volunteers. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, well, hopefully today has prompted people to think I can do that. I'm going to give you a call. So. Um, thank you so much okay well i'm going to uh end thank the broadcast you. for everybody now but thank you so much for joining us and um you know enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll speak to you again soon Thanks, thank you, you. Yeah. Bye, -bye. bye bye